So hello everyone and welcome along to this live webinar. Uh, and today we have a special guest, uh, Dan Kochafer. Hi Dan, uh, CEO and founder of uh, New to Property. Um, yeah, Dan, before I jump into the agenda, perhaps you can briefly introduce yourself and then of course you will have more time afterwards. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me today, first of all. Um, and obviously, thank you to everybody that's turned up um, to have a bit of a chat with us and see us present today. Um, obviously, you know, time is is one of the biggest commodities in the world, I do believe. So thank you for, for giving us your time. So um, as everyone mentioned there, my name's Dan. Uh, my company is New to Property. Um, and basically, I help those who are just getting started in property investing purchase their first property, um, just a safe um, and solid buy-to-let investment property. Um, and I do that through one-to-one -one mentorship. I have a, a live workshops as well that I do around the country. Um, and then I have also an online program. And today I'm just going to be taking a little bit of a snippet from some of the content that I help my clients with, um, which is basically sort of going through what do you do or how do you look if you are an investor that potentially needs to invest in an area that you're unfamiliar with? And how do you go through those processes to select an area, analyze an area, and then also analyzing a property in an area that you don't know? So I'll be talking to you that talking to you about that a little bit later on. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so before we uh, will um, let Dan to present his deck, and presentation uh, i will do like a brief uh, overview about the platform and also i will highlight some of the premium features um, and then i will put the coupon uh, to get the 50 percent off if you're interested during this webinar um, and then dan you will have your presentation and then in the end we'll have a session for questions and answers <clears throat> so first feel free to put questions on the chat or raise your hand and then we will let you ask your question in the end of uh, the webinar. Um, all right, so let's start uh, about the landlord. Uh, this is, by the way, a new account. So I'll do this demo as a new user. Um, so demo is a platform that helps property investors and landlords to do mainly three things. One, is invest and you see in the menu also the menu is being separated to three main parts so the invest uh, section will help you source properties and i will touch uh, on the different tabs here uh, to analyze potential return and also obtain uh, market data the manage section this is the place to manage your um, existing portfolio uh, to manage your tenants and tenancies and to manage your cash flow and then the finance section, this is the place uh, to understand your finance options for buy to let mortgage or remortgage or for bridging finance. Uh, so let's start from scratch. Uh, let's say that I'm now a new investor that I want to start finding properties. So I'll go to the invest part of the platform uh, to the property sourcing section. So here you have different tabs, on market listings. So here we find properties all around the UK from estate agents. And you can see when this property uh, was uploaded to the platform. Um, and you can enter the property page. And here you can see uh, some photos, description, uh, the details of the property with some features, uh, and of course the price. Uh, on the premium plan, you can also review the Google map and you can get the full address of um, uh, the property. And the premium plan is only 99 pounds per year, but for this coupon, just click on add coupon, click done webinar, enter done webinar, click apply, and you, you will have the 50% off upgrade now. You have 49 pounds for the first year. Uh, instead of uh, 99 pounds. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's it's a great benefit and it's available just for this uh, webinar, by the end of this webinar. Um, all right, so let's continue. Um, other things you can do is to estimate the property value. Uh, the basic plan, you have three estimations on the premium, you have unlimited, 
so basically you need uh, just to put the property type, the construction date, internal area in square meters, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, other parameters, click estimate. We use property data API for that. Uh, it takes a few seconds, but then you will get indication about the price of this uh, property, the value of this property. You can change the parameters and click on um, re-estimate to get a different number. You can do the same to estimate the rental income for this property. On the premium plan, you can also add properties to your watch list. I will switch to a premium account in a second, so you'll have you can see everything. And you can also contact the agent. Um, the auctions tab. So here you will find uh, auction lots from online auction houses all around uh, the UK. Um, and here you will find the description of the property, some uh, photos, Google map, uh, the auction date. And uh, on if you're on the premium plan, you can click on place bid and it will take you to the... Uh, you know what, let me switch. I will do it after that. It will take you to the auction house page. So you, to get more information or to actually start the bidding process for this property. A property lists, uh, it's another way to find properties. You need to type an address and then radius from this address and to select the category of properties. So you can see many different categories. We took the repossessed properties category to a different entry. Um, so basically it's quite the same. And then you click search. It takes a few seconds. On the basic plan, you have three property list searches. On the premium plan, you have unlimited. Um, and here you can see also how many days this property is on market. Where we have a designated area yeah. for all <laughs> you may also bring the suppliers out. Guys, can please if you can mute yourself. Uh, you can still promote can. your children's inspiration and creativity in so, so many different ways. So if you're thinking uh, about what material... One second, I, I tried to... Uh, you may have paint, you with... may have glitter. It may be that you're using ink. A favourite of mine is yogurt paint. It is... Sorry, guys. It's not harmful. Please, if you are and not on mute, please mute yourself. Very and when I say yogurt paint, I simply mean using. Did it stop when I did it? Like when uh, done? When I did mute, it stopped. No. Okay. Ah, it's another. Sorel. Okay. Ah, in the panelists. All right. All right. All right. I don't know what's going on here. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. A lot thanks a lot all right now we're good okay all right okay uh, let's continue all right okay so on the property list, uh, you can see how many days this property on market. And if you click go to property page, it will take you, it will take you uh, directly to the page on Rightmove or on the market or Zoopla. So as you can see, you have many tabs to source properties. But if you want uh, to uh, do it by yourself, uh, sorry, to, for the platform to work for you, you can use the sourcing alerts which is also part of the premium plan. And here you can get alerts for price increase, price decrease. Uh, you can get auction date reminder. Um, and also you can define search criteria. I will switch an account so you will see. The... You can also define search criteria. And then every time the platform will find properties that match to your criteria, you will get a notification. All right, so you can define a criteria. It will be an address and a radius from this address price from price to etc you can find that you can define the, the property types you want to look at number of bedrooms from number of bedrooms uh, to um, and you can also receive notifications before um, a auction dates uh, so it's very powerful and then on your watch list you can actually manage your uh, pipeline and to add the property to your watch list is quite easy 
just click add to watch list. And again, this is a part of the premium plan. Just go to the settings page, click upgrade to premium and put uh, done webinar as the coupon code. I will put it now on the chat. Um, all right, the deal analyzer is the, the, the place to analyze new property deals. Um, just put the purchase price and the expected monthly rent, and the platform will calculate the first three metrics for you, the long-term metrics. Um, because we are we don't have a lot of time this webinar because the main thing is done presentation. So I'm encouraging you to schedule a, a call with our team. You can use this chat box and I will put the, the link to schedule a demo with our team. Um, we also have the video tutorials here. So in each page, you will find relevant tutorials to the page. So you can see how you can use different uh, features. Um, on the deal analyzer, you also get a prospect report, which you can, yeah, now I know where to mute it. Wait one second. No, no. Sorry. All right. So um, if you want to export a PDF report, um, very well designed, and we are going to enhance it actually soon with more information about the deal, uh, you can generate quite, quite easily. This is also part of our premium plan. Then postcode information, uh, this is the place to find great statistics about any postcode um, and uh, so here we'll get some facts about the area in terms of how many properties are now for sale average monthly sales monthly turnover um, average yield and more um, and then you can see the five-year capital growth in this area breakdown per uh, by years uh, some statistics about the rental in this area, how many properties are now uh, for rent, up for rent, uh, the monthly transactions, uh, how many days on market, and also the price, the rental prices in this area based on property type. What are the average asking prices in this area? And uh, uh, some comparables. So here, basically, you can see recent sales, um, um, according like based on uh, property type then you can also find the council tax numbers statistics about crime election schools uh, commute method and age distribution very useful when you um, explore a new property deal uh, the manage section this is a place to manage your uh, existing portfolio i will do it very quickly on my portfolio you can upload your properties. Um, we have more than 150 different data items, but there are no mandatory fields. You can just start with some basic details and then add more afterwards. This is a great way to manage your existing portfolio. Uh, yeah, sorry guys. All right. Then uh, the tasks, which will also appear on your dashboard this is a great way uh, to get notifications before due dates, and you can also add tasks by yourself. And my documents, this is the place to manage your documents for each property or for each owner in the account. And with the packages, you can share a list of documents with other people quite easily. Um, my tenants, this, this is the place to manage your tenants and tenancies. On the payment schedule, you can track your rent collection. If you have an overdue payment, you can send a reminder to your tenant. You can also invite your tenant to their own dashboard, and then they can also report maintenance issues, uh, and they can also review their payment schedule and get notifications that they need to pay the rent. And the cash flow section, this is basically the place to manage your income and expenses over time. With the premium plan, you can allocate, uh, you can link your bank accounts or zero account from the transactions page. And then uh, you can auto allocate the transactions. The platform will retrieve the transactions every 24 hours for you. And you can also generate reports, PNL report, expenses breakdown report, uh, income return report, tax report, and more. 
Um, so as you can see, there are many features. Um, and so feel free to, if you like to use the video tutorials or to reach out to us on this chat or to schedule a demo, I will share again uh, the coupon for our premium plan, which is 50% uh, off just during this webinar. So if you want to upgrade, do it now or during the webinar time. And I will share in the chat again uh, the details. Um, the finance tab, um, I think I will touch the finance in the end because we in Bridging Finance lend out act as a lender on mortgage, we mortgage as a digital broker. Um, and very quickly, you can see live products from buy to let lenders and you can start the process to get your mortgage illustration online. All right, so this was the platform. Um, and again, if you want to upgrade to premium and use the 50% off, go to the settings page. On the plan details, you will have a button upgrade. Click on the upgrade, then click on add coupon, enter done webinar, click apply, and then you can proceed with 49 pounds for the entire first year instead of 99 pounds. All right, so I know it was quick. I believe there are some questions, um, but we will uh, wait to the end. So now, Dan, I will hand over to you. Um, but Dan, I think that I need now to manage it because Sorel couldn't join. I think we have some issue with the, the panelists. So I need to see how to manage that. If it's okay, I will give you permissions to share the screen. It's okay like that you have it ready on your yeah, screen? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I think it will be better just that I can control the, the, the meeting. All right, so let me just uh, let me know if uh, you can do it now. It's telling me I'm close disabled at the moment. All right, yeah, I need to. <laughs> All the panelists are Sorel Cohen. I need to understand who is uh, you. All right. Um, You're on mute now, Dan? No, you should be able to hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Be able to hear me. Let me, is it easier if I drop you a message? Will you be able to see which one it hit, which one I am? Try now, try now. Let's see if now. Ah, there we go. That's got it. Right, perfect. Yeah, Jonathan, we have a problem. We have many attendants on the attendants that you cannot see how many, but we have. And then we have 18 panelists. So there is a bug on Zoom. So I'll need, I, I'll manage that now. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. All right. But today, Dan, once you're ready, you can start with your presentation. So Dan will now start his presentation and then we will have uh, a session for questions and answers. Yeah, Dan. Some reason it's sharing the wrong screen. Let me just try and reshare. Let me bring it onto the main screen and see if I can do it that way. Can you guys see the main screen or my note screen? Uh, we can see the notes. Uh, yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, Let me unplug everything and try it that way for you. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay, perfect. So he says, can we control it now? Yes. Okay, so um, thank you there, obviously, um, Aviran, for giving us a rundown of Lenlord there. And I think actually, as I was listening to you um, talk about going through the options there that you have within the tool to be able to select a property, um, 
and then to go through the detail of being able to analyze that property, you know, taking that through, purchasing it, and then being able to manage it in the platform. Um, I thought that my presentation here actually weaves in really well with actually starting before we get to that stage of, of knowing exactly whereabouts it is that we're looking for. So a lot of the clients that I work with um, are from down south within the UK. Um, and one of the blockers or the other challenges that they have is where to invest in the UK because their local area doesn't work up or stack up numbers wise. So a question that I commonly get asked is, if I'm, as an example, we could say based in the southeast of England, we know the properties aren't going to stack up there with the property price versus the amount that it actually rents for. The return on investment just wouldn't be strong enough to make it a sound investment property. So we'd have to look further afield. But let's say one of those investors or us for the example, we don't really know where to start looking. We've heard of places that might be good investment areas, but how do we know what's right for us? So on the first slide here, um, I've just put the process that I would typically go through if I was looking to invest from a distance and didn't really know where to look um, or where even to start looking for a property. So I would always say, if you can, let's say, for example, you live in the middle of Derby or Sheffield, Doncaster, um, or one of those great at the moment investing areas that have still got a lot of growth still in it, then I would always say, go for your hometown first. You know absolutely everybody there. You can get some contacts. You're actually the person on the ground that can see your properties. You can actively manage them if you wanted to, or you could be at a distance in that sort of micro market, but you are there. So I would always say go for hometown first. However, if you can't, the next thing I would then look at is a radius of about an hour, because an hour away really isn't bad when it comes down to property investing. You don't want to be there all the time if you are looking to be a hands off investor, but it does give you access to the property. And of course, it's easier to make those contacts with the tradespeople that you would be using to help you manage that property as well. But let's say we're deep in the southeast and actually an hour's radius still doesn't work for us. Well, the next place that I would go, the next step that I would take on the ladder is somewhere that I frequently visit. So is there a place that I go to on a regular occurrence? Am I going to places because I, I really like walking around those areas? Or do I visit that place um, because of, of, of whatever reason it might be, but somewhere because of work, maybe that I've, you know, I've got a little bit of local knowledge because I'm there with work. I would just rack my brains and I would have a good think about where am I frequently? And potentially, could that be an investment area for me to look into? But let's say, for example, we don't really go out of our area um, and that one doesn't work for us. Well, the next then run on the ladder or the step um, on the process would be, where have I potentially got a person on the ground? So let's say, for example, um, my brother lives up in Sheffield and I live in the southeast, um, or my cousin or my uncle lives um, in Doncaster or Derby or, or, or somewhere that actually would be worth me looking into and worth me analysing because I've just got somebody on the ground that knows the local area. Now, they might not be a property expert and that's absolutely OK, because with that just normal and natural local knowledge, they will have a lot to be able to give you and benefit you when you start initially analysing that area. But let's say, for example, that one fails as well. And we don't know any people on the ground in any areas that, be, that could be good for buy-to-let property investing. So what about a connection of some sort? Maybe you went to university in Liverpool or Manchester, um, but there's a connection there that something you know a little bit more about it than potentially you do other areas. And you know what, if that still even fails, we can then look at convenience. And what I mean by convenience is, as an example, if you lived in the heart of London and it was quite easy for you to get to King's Cross Station, you could jump, jump on a train and it would take you an hour to get to Grantham, where you could walk out of the train station and actually be in an, a good, decent investing area. But it would be really tricky for you to get up and over to Carlisle from London. So you would look at then an area where actually it's more convenient to go to. Now, I'm not suggesting that where your brother or your uncle lives or where you went to university might not be the perfect investing spot. But remember, from this slide, the idea here is 
that if we're based somewhere where we can't initiate, where we can't invest simply because the numbers don't stack up, we need somewhere to start with. We need to be able to put a pin in the map and give us something where actually we can start getting our research done without just looking at the map of the UK, scratching our heads, thinking, where the hell do I even start? So they're the steps that I would take. So let's say now, for example, we found that place that we now want to analyse. So we found a person on the ground, or we've got a connection in maybe Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester, Sheffield, Nottingham, wherever it might be. But how do we then check if that area that we want to analyse is actually going to make a sound investment area? And the way that I like to look at this is there are some simple and easy fundamentals, a tick box, really, if you would like, that you can actually run from a distance. So you don't have to go to these areas yet, but you can actually do the tick research to make sure that they've got the fundamentals that would then give you some reassurance that it will be a good, strong investment area with really good tenant demand. Now, when I move on to the next slide, the next couple of slides, actually, I just want to emphasize before I give you this data and this, this information of what to look for, that not every property, not every fantastic buy to let investment property has to tick all of these boxes. However, the more that you tick, the stronger rental property and the safer rental property that you will have, that if you are investing for the first time from a distance and you don't know an area, the more boxes that you tick, the more safety that will come with this area that you're actually analysing. So on the next slide, I'm going to give you those, those tick offs, basically, that if we found all of these things within an area, it's then definitely worth, worth looking into that little bit further. And they are 15 minute walks, walk to a town centre, 15 minute walk to a train station, a 15 minute walk to a supermarket, a 15 minute walk to a play park or open space and a 15 minute drive to a motorway. Now, you'll notice from all of those 15 minutes, and I will emphasize as well that not every single buy to let investment property will be 15 minutes away from all of these. However, remember, what we're looking for is somewhere at a distance that we don't know really well. And we want to be sure that actually it's going to be a strong investment area. So if those areas have all of these facilities as a town centre, a train station, a supermarket, a play park and a drive to a motorway, you know that there's going to be really good tenant demand. And that's simply because we're ticking all boxes. Maybe somebody works in town. Maybe somebody gets the train to go to work outside of it. The tenants obviously need to get their shopping. Maybe they've got children or they like to get out and about in the green spaced areas, or maybe they drive to work. We've just ticked off all of those tenant profiles, knowing that we will get demand into that area. Parking options as well are equally important. That covers the tenants who have got cars and those that need to get out to go to work. Close to a primary and secondary school brings in all of those young families. Ample local employment brings in everybody that is working in the local area, not on the main road. Parents don't tend to like being on a main road, one for themselves because it's noisy. It can be unsafe and they certainly don't want their kids near main roads, not on a large hill. And this one comes from personal experience of my own. I actually had a property on a large hill. And what I find from, found from doing a little bit of research and speaking to the tenants that were consistently turning over is that tenants don't like to walk back home up a large hill. They don't like to carry shopping up a large hill. They certainly don't like to park their cars on a hill when they have to turn the wheels and have it just against the curb so they can sleep at night know it's, knowing it's not going to fly down the hill. And they don't like their children being out playing football, knowing their football is going to go all the way down the road and onto the main road at the bottom. Not next to a commercial unit, simply because people don't really like the noise or anything that comes with these commercial units and not near to a river just for the safety of the children. So if you think about all of these elements here, what I'm doing is ensuring that we bring in the most amount of tenants possible and we're eliminating and getting rid of all of the potential risks, which then creates a safe place to invest and also brings a really strong tenant demand. So let's say, for example, we are down in the southeast and we found a place where our brother, cousin or uncle or auntie lives. And they live in a place where we've just analysed and found that actually it ticks all of these boxes. So then we can start going a little bit granular. 
and we can start looking on platforms exactly like um, Aviram's just been through there, where we can weave into and go into Landlord to look for what I would call the perfect property. But what makes a perfect property like what makes a perfect location? Well, this is what I believe that would bring in the most tenant demand. Tenants like large bedrooms. They like upstairs bathrooms rather than walking downstairs and through the kitchen to go to the toilet. But just emphasizing here, remember what I said at the start, not every single perfect property or perfect location has to tick all of these boxes. So what I'm not saying is the tenants will veer off from your property and choose somebody else's just because it's got a downstairs toilet. But actually, if you could tick all of these boxes, you could absolutely sleep at night knowing that you've got a decent property that will drag a really good, strong tenant demand. Bath and shower combination, because some people like showers, some people like baths. And often when you've got children, you'll always want a bath. Small manageable gardens. Tenants don't tend to be gardeners. And when those tenants turn over, you're probably not a gardener as well to go in and actually sort it out. So just something in the middle that would attract a tenant because there's some outdoor space, but it's just not too big that it just seems a little bit overwhelming and uh, undermanageable under for them. Desirable kitchen size. Tenants tend to like larger kitchens over galley kitchens. Long leases, if you're looking into apartments, because obviously there's complications with mortgages as you get closer to that lease term as it starts disappearing. Gas central heating, tenants know, and they, they know what costs their money. Some of them are educated on the age of the property will cost them more because of the EPC's rating, the ratings and the insulation, etc. So they look for gas central heating. They look for UPVC um, windows and doors. And of course, you might be investing in properties to do some work on them or to add value. So all you would do is factor these into the costs of you turning these properties around and getting them ready to let. EPCC or above. Now, I say that and I'm sure that there's somebody sat there because I got a comment on my Instagram account the other day saying, but the government scrapped that so you don't need an EPC with C anymore. Are you telling me over the next 15 or 20 years that might come back up, that might not come back up? I'm pretty sure it will at some stage. So if we just now look to have those EPCs, either a high D that can be converted to a C or a C, you'll keep yourself in that safe zone. Believe it or not, one of the most searched things now for properties when tenants are looking is how strong the Wi-Fi signal is within the area. So it's absolutely worth putting on your list as well. Conservatories, there's a lot of glass, there's a lot of things to go wrong, and they come with problems, but they don't add value to a property. And I'm pretty sure that a tenant or the majority of tenants wouldn't be out there looking for properties with conservatories. So this is just something really that's kind of added as a bit of an extra, but as an investor or a landlord, we don't particularly need them. So if I had two properties next door to each other on the same street for the same price in the same condition, I'd go for the one without the conservatory. Damp is a real problem if you're not doing to, if you're not looking to do extreme work on a property and if you don't really know what you're doing. It seems to be a bit of a dark art, actually, which is why I um, took my damp course. I was sick of the guys coming around and scratching their heads and saying, yeah, that's going to cost you six grand. It was always six grand for whatever the job was. So I went over and I did my damp course. And you know what? It is a bit of a problem. So avoid it if you can. Attic rooms are not as desirable to tenants as actual bedrooms. And the reason for that, again, comes to the EPC, which is the energy performance rating. They know that attic rooms get really hot in the summer and they know that they get cold in the summer, in the winter. So if you can avoid them, again, two properties next door to each other, go for the one without the attic room. Sellers, again, are just an additional extra that causes problems rather than adding value and attracting tenants. I've got a few sellers myself. They tend to be damp, dark, cold and just problem related, really. So if I had two properties next to each other, one with a seller, one without, I'd always go without. And subsidence for any new investors out there looking to do a little bit of work. Take on all the work that you want, but I would avoid subsidence. And that's not because it can't be fixed. The properties can absolutely be underpinned. But just think of the resaleability in the future. You go to sell that property and at least a 50 percent, probably 75 percent of investors out there. The minute we hear subsidence, we turn, we walk and we run the other way. So it just means that you won't be able to get as much for that property as you would potentially want to in the future. So that there is your perfect property. but. What about if, let's say you've got your area and you're just looking for something to maximise those return on investments and you're looking for something out there where you can get in nice and early, knowing that you can actually make a bit of a profit over time. So 
How do you then identify a hotspot? Well, the way I always look at this is, and I, I think I'm right on this one, the people that give the most amount of money into an area to do their research, and I've got this from my own experience of, of kind of driving around places and a little bit of research as well. I'm pretty sure that when we see an Aldi or a Tesco being built in a town or a city or maybe a Premier Inn, and it goes up and you think, why are they putting a hotel there? Or why is there an Aldi going in there? There's hardly anybody around here. Those guys, to me, are the ones that spend an absolute fortune looking at where demand is going to be. Where are more people going to be living in the future? And they get in there nice and quick. Now, that spreads across pretty much everything that you can see on this slide in front of us. Where's there a new motorway going in? Where are the schools coming up? Is there a new train station or are there train lines being added? Are supermarkets going up left, right and centre? Is there any large employers coming to an area? Any hotel chains popping up in random places that you shouldn't, that you wouldn't have expected them to be? Any build to rent projects or renovation projects in general? If you spot any of those going on, it should be a bit of a green flag for you just to do a little bit more research. And again, if we treated this like a bit of a tick, tick box, tick box exercise, if we saw an area where a new motorway, large motorway was going in, I think the chances are if we did a little bit of research, we would probably see some schools popping up, train station being revamped, um, large hotel chains coming in, and certainly Aldi will be popping up a new supermarket. So as I mentioned before, when we first started this, guys, you don't have to tick every single one of these boxes to be able to find a property. However, if you're new to investing or if you're new to looking into a new area, the more boxes that you tick, the safer that property will be. It certainly won't be one that will, you know, you'll get enough money to buy a mansion overnight or a Ferrari in two weeks time. It will be a safe solid, sound and secure buy to let investment property, but it will give you a really good indication of where to look, what to look for and how to spot those hotspots. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. Great tips. Um, so, uh, yeah, before we, we go to the uh, questions and answers uh, um, se session, um, I will ask you, if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand and we will let you the permission to speak. Um, and uh, also you can write your uh, question on the chat, questions for Dan or questions about uh, landlord. But I think that if Dan is here with us, uh, I think uh, it was a great presentation. So I think any question on that, yeah, I see some people raise their, hand, their hands. Um, just quickly, just to remind you, because we don't have time, a lot of time until the end of the webinar, um, that you have the benefit of 50% of our premium plan, which is very enhanced. Uh, you get uh, many features, uh, unlimited postcode information, uh, sourcing, all the things that Dan spoke about, sourcing alerts. You can actually define your own uh, search criteria. Um, you can apply filters on the on-market listings. Uh, you can, of course, assess the, in, the get indication indication about the property value, rental value. Um, you can explore the area with the postcode information um, and more. So for that, just go to your settings page or click on it. Put the link the slash premium on the chat. So click on it. Click upgrade. Then click add coupon and click done webinar, click apply, and then you'll see 50% off. Then you just need to click upgrade now, and then it will be 49 pounds for the entire year, for the first year only. And then after that, it will be 99 pounds, and then you put your card numbers and you get premium. The premium plan also includes um, some benefits of uh, um, a 150 pounds broker fee discount on mortgages, 150 pounds bridging and management fee discount and 10% discounts on landlord insurance policy, etc. Um, um let me also show you the YouTube channel. I would like if you want more content and see all of our webinars, uh, you can see it uh, on our YouTube channel. Dan, you can also share your social media if uh, if there is like or a place that people can approach you. Um, I will put it on the on the chat, the YouTube channel as well. Um, and 
And in the end, I will also put a link to schedule a call. Great, Hardeep. Uh, yeah, so just start, yeah, upgrade to premium just for this uh, time in this webinar. It's, uh, you know, very affordable, 49 pounds to upgrade to premium, support landlord as well. Um, and yeah, go for it. Now let's uh, go to the uh, questions and answers session. We have several people raised their hands. Um, I will start with uh, Aqua. I gave you the permission to speak. Let me know if you can, if you are with us, with us still. Let's see. All right, so let's go to Muhammad. Let me know if you are still here. Ah, Aqua, yeah, so Aqua, try to unmute yourself. Oh, hi, guys. All right, yeah, hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. How about yourself? Yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to ask your question. Um, in in relation to the software, what is um? How do you guys? Where do you guys get your data sets from? So it's uh. So we use some APIs. So we have APIs from agents. Uh, we use some web data extraction. Uh, we also use property data. Uh, we use aggreg aggregated data to get some statistics. So it's a combination of different sources. Okay. And um, roughly on average, is it pretty accurate? Look, everything, I think Dan Tachek, uh, this, you know, explained that you need, you need to do your due diligence very carefully. I think that to use the software, it will shorter the time, of course, it will provide you many indications, but let's say that you are now running like perform a property value estimation on landlord, okay? When you got the property value 200K, okay? okay? I think it will, it's definitely in the area, okay? So it's an indication of this, of this uh, property value, but it's not replacing a surveyor or like for you to inspect the property or to get to do your due diligence. But with online tools, you can get a lot of information, statistical information about the property, about the postcode. So I think the first step can be, you know, with online tools. And then I would not give up on, you know, in, like doing your own due diligence, perhaps inspect the property. If it's an auction purchase, review the legal pack. Um, so, but I think the digital tools will basically help you, you know, save time. The deal analyzer is great to assess your potential return. But uh, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. If you want to buy a property, you need um, more due diligence. You need to actually to inspect the property. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> sorry, you 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 you're gonna say so. I'm, I'm, my main yeah. thing is I was gonna use it for a tool kind of to deal source and kind of to get a mass amounts of deals in, so I can assess those deals. I think it would be very ideal for that. Yeah. Dan, you wanted to say something about it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to, um... no, it's, uh, it's absolutely fine. I, I think, um, Avriam, what you say there is is absolutely right. And there is absolutely a need for us to be able to use these digital tools because, you know, the example I use there is, you know, somebody based in the southeast where you can't keep traveling up to Grantham to, you know, go and crunch the numbers and look at these properties, et cetera. Um, so the way to do it is is that desktop research to really sort of get granular yourselves before you then know and, and and you're certain somewhere or a property is worth looking into further and then you would kind of come I won't say offline because you can still do it online but you would go very singular to a property and then actually come off the stop relying then on on the AI or the portals but you would just choose that property and start talking to people you'd phone the agents and sense check the information that you found on the portal so these things that these tools that we use are a really really good guide to cut out as much as we possibly can and to bring us into an area where we then need to get that little bit more involved and be better than AI currently is at the moment okay yeah, yeah that that sounds perfect all right Thanks, Aqua. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go now to Solomon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. for your question. Okay. Um, thank you, Dan. 
Thank you, um, Shaka. Um, my question, it's, I think that's probably might be for Dan or any of you guys. Um, Dan, you made mention of when doing your analysis, like hot spot and all of that. When you want to go deeper, like go into the property itself, like what sort of analysis do you do? Like, I know on the, on the portal, like on the platform, you see all kind of statistics, you know, but how do you kind of nail which of these statistics kind of you can rely on? And sometimes how does those stats relate to like return on investment or kind of give you that um, confidence or kind of give you that, okay, this particular um, property is a good investment. Like I know you can see return on investment, yield, your percentage yield in that property and all of that, but internal rate of return, but those doesn't really translate to anything, especially for people that are new to this kind of um, investment. So how does that relate into your overall like confidence in a particular property when doing those sort of deep dive analysis? Sure, and it's, it's a great question as well, because you're absolutely um, right in, in questioning, you know, if, if AI is spitting out some information to us, how can we be confident um, to believe in it, really, and to trust in that that data before we sort, sort of move forward and then maybe get a, a shock a, a little bit further down the line? So my advice is to is to do what the professionals do. And what I mean by the professionals is your, let's say, your rig surveyors, um, your um, estate agent surveyors, um, and then also the bank valuers as well. So the way that those guys come up with their price and they value the properties is they look for comparisons. So what I mean by that is, let's say we found um, what we think is the perfect area because it's got all of the fundamentals. We've then gone on to landlord and we've got a couple of properties that have popped up that we think could make really good rental properties. But we need to be clear on the numbers. So we need to be absolutely certain that the return on investment that we think that we're going to get from it is accurate rather than getting a shocker later down the line. So at that point, that's when I would then come what I call offline. So I'm not relying on the Internet or the tools anymore. I'm actually going to do the research myself. So what I would do is find three to five comparable properties. And what I mean by that is same condition, same area, within as close proximity as possible, same garden size, same layout, same room types, all of that kind of stuff. So you're looking for three to five identical properties. What you would then do is look how much they sold for and average them out. And that will pretty much give you the market rent of that property, uh, sorry, the market value of that property. You then do the same for the rental in income as well. So find similar properties in that area that are as close to the carbon copy of the property that you're actually looking for. Find out how much that rents for. Do three to five of them and then average it. And then you will get a very accurate amount that you can rent or let that property out for. So when, when you've got the purchase price or the market value of that property and you've got the rental income that it will achieve, Combining those together and doing a little bit of maths, you'll be able to then work out the return on investment. And then you can come back to the online tools and just check it against it just to see if, you know, if it was right, if it, if there's, you know, give or take here or there. But you will then be able to know what those numbers are and if it's worth you then looking into further. OK, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much Dan, for your answer. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, then if you have a few more minutes to answer more questions. Yeah, all right, perfect. Uh, Ashley. Ah. Um, yeah, so Ashley, you wrote it on the chat. I give you permission if you want to, but I can read your question. If I wanted to buy out a freehold property for 100k ish, how much would you say I realistically needed to purchase a property in the sense that I would achieve extra capital by a bridging loan? Additionally, would it be better to use a bridging loan or a traditional bank loan for short-term house development? Um, Dan, you want to answer that? Or? <laughs> Thanks, Avril. Um, so this. There's so many factors that are involved in this that it's not a very simple or straightforward black and white answer. Right. Now, 
the reason why I say that is because you might not be able to get a bridging loan. You might not be able to get a traditional bank loan. Um, and there are massive differences between the two. The bridging loan is ideally better set up for um, flip projects or for short term um, developments that, that you're doing something on. And the reason why I say that is because if you go on to a traditional mortgage, then you're going to have a time period of how long you've got to wait, which could be two years, five years, depending on when you fix it in. Now, of course, you could break the terms of that mortgage and come out of it, but it comes with costs. So there's so many factors into building in the numbers on this that we wouldn't be able to give you a straight answer of whether it's better to go bridging, traditional mortgage, um, and, and all of the monetary amounts around it, just simply because there are so many varying factors of it. But typically, bridging the bridging guys or community, they'll buy in cash because it buys them the time to be able to do what they need to do, and then they can exit whenever they want to. Some experienced guys out there, and quite a few of them, use bridging finance. But with that bridging finance, you've got to be very clear on how much the project's going to cost you, how much bridging you need, and when you're going to come off that bridge as well in the future, so you don't then incur those, uh, those additional costs of the bridge. So if you're completely new to it, I'd say be wary. It is absolutely possible to either do it with a standard mortgage or to do it with bridging finance. But just find somebody that's done it um, and make sure they can guide you through so you know exactly what you're doing rather than jumping in with two feet and then getting a little bit lost and a little bit stuck in the middle and finding yourself in a bit of hot water. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, you know, for bridging, you need, you need to know what you do, you know, because usually bridging, as Dan said, is for improvement projects or, you know, if you want to flip or, you know, to refinance by the end of the term or... Also, if you want to buy an auction and you have only four weeks to complete, binging you typically will be faster, but you need to have a valid exit strategy and a plan. Um, and, you know, if you are just a beginner, start with light refurbishments, not, you know, heavy refurbs projects, um, because bridging can be very great tool but it can be also something that can work against you if there are delays because the cost is um is higher usually um we we provide bridging finance as a lender so you can contact us if you want to discuss uh, but again i think that uh, use the deal analyzer also like the flip analyzer on, on lender to understand um the impact of the loan cost on your potential return and what happens if it's being delayed um, I see some uh, questions on the chat about the coupon. So if it doesn't work for you, some I see some it does, some not. What I want you to just just contact us on the chat on Lendot. Say that you were in this webinar, and we will make sure you get a fifty percent tomorrow morning. Uh, just do that uh, on your from your account, uh, and uh, and if not, just try to use the coupon as I, I mentioned. Uh, let's take one more question, um, and uh, thanks, Ashley. Uh, Faye, uh, if you are if you are still with us, you can ask your question. Let's see. All right, we'll wait for Faye um, Ikena. Let's see if you are here. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. I actually did type down my question. So I was wondering, yeah, if you could invest in, because I consider your money just concentrating on the United Kingdom. So if you want to invest in another country, would you be able to utilize this app futures? Like, for example, like, another Euro European country like in Paris, in France or Germany? Uh, so on Lendo, basically you can uh, use different addresses in different locations. Uh, the Google map auto completion will be set by your country. So if you sign up from the UK uh, and you chose the UK as a country, then uh, it will be auto adjusted to the U UK addresses, but in theory you can. Um, 
but I think that the, also the terminology for the UK account is, you know, is mainly for uh, the UK rules, but I think you can. I think that we have some users that manage properties in different countries, and there are some functionality that will support it. If you want to find properties, uh, so we'll have it only in the UK, but if you want to analyze property deals, perhaps it will work also for, uh, or if you want just to manage the cash flow or to manage the data or documents for properties uh, abroad, I, I don't see a problem. Okay, thank you. Um, can I also ask another question? Yes. All right, yes. so um, based on the perfect location and perfect property, the um, talk that um, from Daniel, I think Daniel, um, can you briefly talk about HMOs, like the strategy, the strategy HMO? Uh, Dan, you have experience with HMOs or? Uh, I do. What is it exact? What is it specifically that you want to know? Well, I just want to have like a, just, just to understand it from any point of view, like just a small description on on it, and then the best way to go about it. Uh, you're leaving me very broad there. Um, so let me think of some top tips off the top of my head or or let's say the, the things that pop to mind about HMOs. Um, one of them you need to check the area. Um, and the reason why I say check the area is because HMOs um, have different licensing laws and regulations, etc. So let me give you an example. In my hometown of Lincoln, there's an Article 4 cast over Lincoln. And that what that means is that if I wanted to house more than three unrelated people within a property, I would have to apply for a, it's not a license, but it's a change in planning um, because the council have control over how many people go into those properties. So for me to have a smaller HMO doesn't really make sense. And the reason why Article 4 came into force or came into play is simply because when these university towns started coming up, everybody started turning all of the properties into mini HMOs, um, which means that obviously it then affects um, everything else going on within the cities. Now, I could, of course, um, invest in a property that has got a HMO license, and that would be OK. Um, so if I was then looking in my hometown of Lincoln, I'd be looking for a, a bigger property that has got a H HMO license already. Now, if I went a little bit further afield in an area that I also invest, which is Newark, there's no Article 4. So what that means is I could buy a three bed property, turn it, convert it into a four bed property and then rent it out by the rooms. And that would be absolutely OK. But back to the perfect location and the perfect property, Newark doesn't have a university. So. My question then to myself would be is what tenants would be going to Newark that need or want or desire to live in a HMO? And the only answer really to that would be undesirable tenants, because there's no university. Um, the lower, um, let's say, tenant band have all got sort of jobs in factories, et cetera, and they kind of their families, they live together. So it kind of makes me question what tenant pools would I be attracting? And would there be a strong tenant demand? Because a HMO is so different to a standard property or a house. It's a completely different um, tenant, uh, tenant demographic. And I would need to ensure that there was strong tenant demand. So for example, if I plonked a HMO in the middle of Liverpool, I know that those rooms would rent out all day long. But of course, I've then got to check the numbers to ensure that the HMO, the price of the HMO that I'm purchasing and the, rent, uh, the rental value that I get for each of those rooms is worth it for the price of the property to ensure that actually it does stack up as a sound investment property. So with HMOs, you can convert them. Um, you can get great money from renting them out um, by the room. You want to make sure that the location is sound because HMOs don't work everywhere. And established HMOs now in our bigger cities, our more established cities, come with a bit of a price tag and that's where you then want to calculate the numbers to ensure that they do stack up okay thank you um you you know you mentioned getting a license for hmo if if for example you you see like a five bedroom house and then you want to convert it to about three different flats all in suits with the whole kitchen do you need a license for that 
Yeah, so that's that's different. That's not a HMO. That would be split titles. So if you're putting kitchenettes, kitchens, and actually separating them off, that would be a different strategy to a HMO. So HMOs wouldn't have kitchenettes in them. They would have one shared kitchen. Whereas if you're then looking at single flats, then you would have the kitchenettes, et cetera. You'd have separate access. And the rules and regulations are different for fire alarms, fire escapes, um, fire doors, et cetera, all of that kind of stuff. And that goes through the local planning uh, planning department of wherever it is that you'd be investing. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks, Dan, for your answer. Uh, let's take the last question, Sophia, if you are still here. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Um, okay, in the meantime, I will just... Uh, yes, Sophia, we can't hear you, Sophia. I, I see your message on the chat. No, we can't. Um, Okay, did you fix that? Remind you, I want to remind you again about the benefit of this webinar, 50% off our premium plan. Um, I will show you quickly again what you need to do. Go to the settings page, plan details, click upgrade, click add coupon, done webinar, click apply, and then scroll down and click upgrade now. And then you'll have the 49 pounds instead of 99 pounds. Uh, you have uh, until 8.15, let's skip it, or 8.30 um, to upgrade to get the 50%. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, all right. Sophia, you asked a question on the chat for tenant pool if you are looking in areas with much lower house prices what level of crime would you ex expect um dan you have any insights about uh crime local crime we like on landlord you can see some statistics about crime in a postcode but how it will impact your decision let's see as, like as an investor whether to invest or not yeah, so the thing that you've got to really consider here, um, and, and this is often one actually I put out on my um, Instagram account, and it gets it gets a lot of comments, is my advice would be not to invest in two cheaper properties. And the reason for that is that cheap properties tend, and I am painting with a broad paintbrush here, tend to be in undesirable or more undesirable areas. And in more undesirable areas, there tend to be more undesirable tenants. And what I mean by that is tenants that potentially aren't working or the areas got a higher crime rate. Um, and it's just not quite um, as affluent, let's say, as, as other areas out there. So the cheaper the property tends to be, the cheaper the area. And in cheap areas, you get undesirable tenants. Now, there's one major key here that often new investors don't really think about. They look at the deals, they look at the properties, they look at the areas. But there's one thing that we have to really remember. None of this works unless we're getting paid. And the way that we get paid is from rental income. So if we're in an undesirable area, there's a far higher chance that properties will get trashed, tenants won't pay, and you will have problems. So just as a, as a personal example, I've had a property where um, the tenants used the lounge as a dog kennel. Um, so I couldn't get access, it was during COVID. It took me about eight, nine months. In fact, you can see the whole journey on my YouTube channel um, of me going through, taking these tenants to court, getting the property back, re-renovating it. They owe me about 10,000 pounds. So if you can imagine that, and now this property isn't in a undesirable area, but there's such a higher chance, there's such more probability if the properties are in undesirable areas to have those kind of problems and those kind of issues to deal with. So if you go into the cheap end of the scale, you've got to understand that that's going to come with problems. And, you know, over time, there are going to be complications that you may have to deal with. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, great answer. Thanks, Dan. 
Um, all right. So uh, then I think uh, people ask how they can uh, contact you. Um, by the way, Dan is on our experts panel. If you go to the invest in the menu, click experts, you will find a list of experts in many uh, areas and categories. Uh, and Dan is here as well. So you can schedule, this is a paid call, yes? Like you can book a meeting uh, with Dan and Dan will uh, also write, uh, yeah, on the chat. Uh, so yeah, you have, this is the Instagram and the website, yes? And the YouTube channel as well. Uh, perfect. Um, all right, so we will keep uh, the premium upgrade 50% off by um, um, 8.30. And if you um, had some issues to upgrade, just write on the chat and don't worry. If no one will answer you tonight, that's fine. Tomorrow morning, we'll take care of it and you, we, you will get your uh, discount. Uh, so yeah, I know if perhaps we didn't answer all the questions, but uh, we are running out of time. So thank you very much, Dan, for joining me today uh, and great insights, great present presentation. And thanks everyone for joining the webinar and we will see you in the next webinar and feel, feel free to reach out and, you know, send your suggestion for new features or report bugs or uh, also consult about finance, getting finance with us, bridging or mortgages. Thanks, Dan. Thank you very much and good evening, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for your time. Nice to meet you all. Thank you.